Hi, this is Bob from Hubby Concepts, and today it's time for another tank video. Now, I've done a few tanks. Uh, I did the Tiger one from Tamaya oh, several years ago, a four-part um, one of my fir first videos. And uh, that tank will make an appearance here at the end of this video. Um, I did the uh, Henlong Leopard tank not too long ago uh, that I did for a load for a Tamaya semi-truck. And today I'm going to do the Henlong Merkava, which is a fairly new tank from Henlong. It's been out for a couple months. Uh, this is the uh, upgraded version with metal tracks and metal gearbox. Um, spectacular looking tank. I've got it right here. Um, super fun to put together. In this video I'll do a little unboxing, a quick review. We'll fire it up. And then most of the video I'll do uh, painting. Um, this is a complete repaint. Uh, it turned out really, really nice. Uh, just a gorgeous tank. And uh, it's big. That's why uh, my Tiger will make an appearance at the end comparing the size to this this tank. And uh, yes, I call them Merkavas. Um, I've heard them called Merkavas or Merkavas. Um, Merkava is the way I say it. Don't, don't beat me up about it if you call it something different. But anyway. Uh, beautiful tank. I'm really, really happy with how it looks. Uh, so follow along. Let's get started. Oh, well, sometimes it's just so fun to get a new box in the mail. Um, and so let's just pop this open. I have not even looked at it yet. Quite excited about this one. to this, the um, Israeli Defense Force Merkava Mark IV. Um, it is the uh, metal version, so it's got metal uh, road wheels, metal tracks, a uh, bunch of other metal parts. Typical Henlon boxing, really nice. So, um, yeah. I love my tanks. I've been waiting for this tank for a long time. Three tanks I've been waiting for for a long time. One of them is this one. The other one is the M60, American M60, which is now available. And the uh, American uh, Bradley Fighting Vehicle, which is available and I actually have on order for myself. Um, and then I'll do a Tamiya um, Abrams to go with them so I can kind of complete my, my tank display. Take a look at this. I know you can't see everything on the, on the camera. But we'll pop this open and take a look at it. Okay, so first off is we have our instruction sheet. Uh, antennas. Oh, those look nice. Uh, yeah, spring-loaded antennas. I like those. Okay. Um, some kind of a very small battery pack. This is probably the main battery pack, but obviously pretty little to fix that problem. Okay. Detail parts. We've got... Uh, all kinds of detail parts. Nicely painted. They even have, um, it's probably going to be hard to see on the camera, but they even have weathering effects on a lot of them. Photo etched metal parts. Wow. Airsoft pellets. Additional uh, plastic parts, again, slightly weathered. Screwdriver. Allen wrench. Smoke fluid. A USB charger.
Oh, and there we go. And boy, this thing is a massive. Uh, there's the radio. Oh, it's huge. It's Abrams tank size. Wow, it looks good too. Okay, so I will uh, go to work on this and uh, kind of finish unboxing it and then we'll take a good look at it. Alright, so I uh, vacuumed off all the styrofoam pieces and before I do anything else, I just like to kind of see uh, what I'm looking at here. So the first thing is the on off switch is underneath this little hatch right here. And there's a lever that you flip for access to the battery compartment. And I stuck the battery in there. So I can turn on my transmitter and turn on my tank. right away is it has a it has a variable speed for the turret rotation which makes it a lot easier to center the turret So the basic operation is good. Uh, I just like to check that before I do any more. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull the battery out and I'm going to pull the tracks off and paint the tracks. Now I have a, a mixture of paint that I, I uh, put together a long time ago and I'll just paint the tracks. I'll airbrush them with my track mix. And then I'm going to start thinking about painting the tank. Now, I personally think this is a pretty darn good paint job, but I, and, and probably if you just sprayed it with clear flat, it would be okay. Um, it's a little toy looking in a lot of places. And uh, so I'm going to repaint the whole tank. And uh, I will figure out a mix for uh, Israeli Defense Force uh, current paint using Tamiya paint. And I'm going to just airbrush the whole thing. So I'm going to pull the tracks off, paint those, and then go to work on painting the tank. And then when I paint it, I will also take all the plastic accessory pieces. And there's a lot. and paint those at the same time. So, kind of an exercise in painting, but uh, I, I think it'll make it look pretty good. So, that, and the sound is excellent. I, I really like the sound. The tank operates real smoothly. Um, really good looking, massive size. So, uh, anyway, we'll, we'll go to work on it and we'll see what we come up with. Just thought I'd show a couple things before I paint this. I. Uh, I masked off all the uh, the windows. I masked off the lights here, masked off the tail lights, and uh, I painted the back side of these bulbs uh, with black paint, a couple coats of them, because the light was bleeding out the back. And I removed all the road wheels, drive wheels, and of course the tracks. So now I can get in here to paint the suspension arms better. Uh, these are metal, 
uh, I'll primer those before I paint them. I'm not going to primer the tank, I'm just going to paint it. Uh, these I'll mask off, these are all plastic, I'll mask off the, the tire and then just paint the center. They do make metal wheels, but I just got the version of the plastic wheels. For now, I might upgrade to those later. So, now it's time to head off and do some painting. Well, before I, I paint, I decided I want to install a few pieces. For example, I installed these tow hooks here. And there's, there's quite a bit of, there's actually a lot, of um, parts and pieces that add on to the tank. Um, I'm not going to install all of them, but I'm going to judiciously install a few. For example, I'm going to install this. I just think it'll be easier to glue it on before I paint, and the paint will will match better on a big piece like this. I'm going to install these, these side rails here on both sides, and then some small pieces. For example, there's a there's a round little piece that glues in here to cover the screw and there's a couple of pieces that that mount on up in the front here so I'm going to go ahead and install a couple little odds and ends and then I'm going to start painting. Now what I've decided to do is I'm going to pre-shade this with NATO black so along all the seams I'm going to spray NATO black and then when I paint it that will change the paint color uh, underneath a little bit. So I'll show you what that looks like when I get to it. Um, <laughs> this tank takes a lot of my workbench. It's pretty big. So I'm going to install a few of those things, do some pre-shading, and then we'll uh, come back and I'll show it to you. Well here we are with the pre-shading. You can see what I'm talking about. You don't have to be um, you don't have to be precise with it. So now it's time to paint. Now, Tamiya, I, I'm going to use Tamiya paint, they do not make an IDF uh, color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix half of XF20 medium gray with half of XF57 buff. So those two will be a 50-50 mix, and then I'll add another 50% thinner, and that will give me the IDF um, tank color. So I'm going to mix those together. And then I'm going to paint this. It's, it's huge. It's a lot of uh, it's a lot of work for an airbrush, but I don't know a better way to paint it because you have to lay the paint on pretty thin. That's where the shading will come through. So uh, I'll be airbrushing the rest of the afternoon. So I started um, painting this, and I just wanted to kind of show the difference in the color. So. The original color right here, it's a little hard to see because of my pre-shading, but it's a little bit, I don't know, browner. You can see the areas I painted here I'll go over to this side. And you get a pretty good look at this. I think this color is way closer to the actual Israeli tanks. And I've just sprayed a very light coat. You can see how the pre-shading kind of shows through. Um, I've got more work to do. and. Uh, um, I'm going to take it back to the paint booth and kind of finish that. A little area here where there's some of the original color, which is a lot more brown. Um, this looks way better. Plus the finish is, is nicer. It's a matter of finish. This was kind of shiny. So uh, I think repainting this tank is really going to, going to make it look good. So back to the booth. We'll finish, uh, finish spraying it. So here's um, finished base coat turned out really well. Now it's time for me to paint these are these are a dark color black here and here and then the two boxes in the back. Now I don't I don't like to spray black because it just looks too black on a model uh, because of the scale differences. So I'm going to use German gray and uh, airbrush these. Now the reason I didn't just mask them off and keep them is they didn't paint the bottoms and it's kind of visible. So uh, I will run a line of masking tape around here and paint these, paint these, and paint the two back ones. And then we'll see how that looks. Well, I, uh, I got this painted, and uh, I really like that color. It's, 
it's way better than black. It just is not as, uh, I don't know, black just stands out too much. And the rear, the rear fenders are here. Um, I also painted all the road wheels um, and other parts, and I've got the tracks painted. So I'm going to go ahead right now and reinstall the tracks, which is and the road wheels, which is basically just rolling the tracks on, screwing on the road wheels, and then we'll come back and, and start on some of the detailing. There are a lot of parts on this. I've got a few more things to paint. Uh, there's a tree here. You can see the original color and the new color. Um, the new color is, well, I like it better. I think it's more true to scale. I've been looking at a lot of Merkava pictures on the internet, and this seems to uh, to look pretty good compared to that. So, anyway, I'll paint these, get the tracks on. We'll uh, continue to work on this. As you can see, got the tracks and the road wheels on. I put the caps on, and. Uh, so she's back on her feet. Uh, next, I'm going to install this photo etched grate. It mounts right here with little tiny screws. And then I'll, uh, I'll mount these two rear fenders and the uh, red LED light fits into those. And they snap on the back. So we'll get those on and then slowly start to uh, um, get the accessories back on it. A lot of add-on pieces on this uh, tank. For example, these these boxes go back here like this. They have a nice photo etched um, grade on them. And that is kind of tricky. So I thought I'd just show how it goes on. Uh, you can see that I bent the bottom panel just a tiny bit. I'll add a few drops of uh, Super glue here and put super glue across the bottom. And then this these tabs just bend down. Like that. And this just fits on here. Tabs hold it. And then the bottom is is glued on there. And then these tabs actually, it's hard to see, but you can, you can actually fold them over to hold the top on better. Although with the glue it's gonna be plenty strong. And that's ready to go. So um, then there's a, uh, a hatch that mounts back here. Apparently on the Merkava they can carry troops, uh, which I didn't really know. And there's a hatch back here uh, troops can uh, enter and egress from. So that is made up of these panels here and they just have a panel that fits on this side and then they mount on this hatch. Uh, Henlong has designed it so this actually opens up um, and I will go ahead and put those together. These I'm going to paint uh, with my IDF gray uh, to start with but then I'll probably do in the instructions they show them as a uh, is a darker color and I don't know if that's just because it's showing that it's a piece of photo etch but I'll go find some online resources and just see what these look like. I'll find some pictures of the tank and uh, and get those painted. So I'm going to go ahead and do those things. So after looking at a lot of these tanks online I decided that this uh, grill in the back was generally painted in the color of the tank. Now this has got a a kind of a, a capture on both sides and so what you have to do is loosen up these two screws in the back and then this just fits in between the body and the bottom. You can see I, 
I mounted the door in there. And then those just go like that. Also, um, I noticed online that sometimes these have covers on the top of them. I don't know that I'll do that anytime soon, but I might in the future. And then this just screws down and captures these. Then there's a, a part here that just presses into place and you don't glue those so if you ever want to take the body off you can just pop them out. Um, I also glued on these lift points. I painted the shovel and glued it in and I glued this piece on. So that pretty much with the fenders completes the, the rear and the door here completes the rear end of the tank. So now we'll look at some detailing maybe on the, on the turret. All right, well, as I start looking at the turret detailing, there's several things going on. The first one is there's a couple of uh, machine guns, um, actually very nice. Uh, so I need to build these up, and I'll probably paint those with gun metal. Um, and then the other one are these rear turret iron balls. Now, on the, on the Merkava tank, back here in the back, they hang iron balls by pieces of chain because the armor back here is a little thinner so if a if an anti-tank weapon comes in here it hits the iron ball which detonates it before it can get underneath the the tank here so there's a whole bunch of these iron balls just a ton of them and these brass uh, brackets that hold them and the idea is you cut a couple links of chain, this tab bends around the chain, and then the iron ball hangs on the bottom. Now I've looked at up-to-date pictures of Merkava tanks, and they are generally painted the same color as the body. But uh, I don't think I can do a good job painting these ahead of time because they're going to get all scratched up when I, when I bend them. So I think what I'm going to do is assemble these and then I'll just airbrush them after they're built. Um, and then these um, these links for the um, armor uh, for the bullets uh, need to be repainted. They're not quite right. So I'm going to assemble the guns and <coughs> paint those <coughs> and then assemble these iron balls and paint those. And then these these metal brackets then screw onto the side turret. There's also some additional armor plating that mounts on the on the sides and the back of the turret. But they have um, that's their number plates also. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the included uh, decals and put the numbers on the number plates before I attach those to the tank. So. I will show that. I will show what these look like. I'll probably um, show putting a couple of them together. The guns I'm just going to build and paint. Uh, they're nothing special. The only thing I plan on doing is the ends of the barrels here are are solid, uh, which to me looks dumb. So I'll take my drill and drill them out a little bit to give them a little bit of depth. And I'll do that on, on all the guns. So. Uh, also, these grenade launchers that mount on the body. Take a look at one of these here. Yeah, see there, they're solid on the end. I don't think that's the way they are. Uh, it's possible they have a cover that uh, is broken when the grenade is released, but I suspect they're more uh, hollow, so I might be doing a little bit of work on those and then uh, repaint the end. So I've got a lot of painting work before I can get these uh, detail pieces on, but boy, it's sure going to look good. I, I really like the way this tank is turning out so far. I'll tell you what, this takes forever. I've been working on these for like the last three hours, um, but that's what they look like when they're done. And then they'll 
I'll paint them and then they'll get bolted on or screwed onto the sides of the turret. So there's there's several of them. Got one more left here. I thought I'd just show you how I do it. So um, I just made the chain into three or four links depending on the number that were required. And then you just bend the tabs up 90 degrees and this just drops over and then the tab just bends around it. Like that. So now the chain's on. And then the uh, the little balls have a little tiny hook on them and you got to be careful because it's easy to bend the hook out I found the hard way uh, and they just snap on so that's how they go so I will finish off this one and then I've got all of them and then I'll go ahead and uh, airbrush them and mount them on the tank So before I hang all these iron balls around the back of the turret, I want to uh, do a little weathering on the road wheels. Now I'm going to do some additional weathering on the tank, but on the road wheels I need to tip it up on the side, so I really don't want those balls on there. So I'm going to use Tamiya Brown Panel Line Marker. See that those wheels are in there, yeah. And it's real thin, and I just it just runs everywhere. So I'm going to hit all the road wheels with this brown panel line marker and that just gives them a worn appearance because they definitely take abuse. And this stuff just settles into all the cracks and everything. You can you can experiment with it. You can wipe it on and off. They make it in several colors. I, I tend to use black and brown quite a bit. They also make a gray. Um, and it's very thin. So that's kind of the effect that I'm going for. It's just that that kind of weathered look. And uh, so I'll do the sprocket. I can I can turn the track by hand to do the sprocket, and I'll do the rest of these road wheels. And then later on, I'll be using some of this brown panel line marker to make uh, oh spots. For example, I can take it, put a spot right here, and then I can just hit it with a little drag. And now I've got a little spot there. Um, and uh, maybe some streaks. I'll do some some uh, the black also. But that's for later. Right now I want to do the road wheels so I can get it back on its feet. The other thing I've got to do is this this battery box cover which is also the air intake grate needs to be painted. You can see it hit a little bit with the uh, with the airbrush but I think this is going to be like a dark gray so I'll probably I don't know. I haven't figured that out yet. But when I do I'll show you. So on the uh, intake grate, I've decided just to use black panel line marker. And this is real easy because the stuff just wicks everywhere. And so I can do a nice grate. It, uh, it doesn't wick up onto the top. And it, it's got not a super thick covering, so it, it actually looks pretty realistic. Yeah, so I will just Continue to do the rest of this. Yeah, that's pretty slick.
Okay, I will uh, finish the rest of that. So these guns I uh, airbrushed with uh, Tamiya gun metal and they look pretty nice but they need a little weathering. You can see how the intake turned out. I think that looks great. When it dries I'll spray some clear flat on it. Um, for the weathering on the guns I'm going to use this Tamiya Weathering Master and they make these. They come in all kinds of different colors. Um, light gun metal. There's a silver. We'll take a look at this silver and this just just rubs on. So we'll take it, we'll rub it on, and it'll bring out the highlights on the gun. I know it's probably hard to see on the On the video, but it really does kind of highlight the, the features. Sometimes I'll dry brush them too, but what I want to do here is is do the edges so that they show like where. So these top edges here, bottom edges, and then I'll. Uh, I'll spray this with clear flat when I spray the, the intake grate. So I'm going to work on both of these guns, get these weathered up with this uh, weathering master. I'll probably use a light gun metal too, but yeah, that's starting to look like what I want. And uh, so I'll finish those and clear flat those and then we'll go back to work on the tank. So here's my iron iron balls and chains all complete. That was a lot of work but it looks really good um, and it wouldn't it wouldn't be right without those because that's part of their defense system. I think that's fascinating that they use those to cook off anti-tank weapons before they hit the armor. So, uh, now it's time to finish uh, putting on the accessories. I've got my... I clear flatted this. I think it turned out really nice. So, that just sits up in here. This way. And uh, now I've got to install the guns, there's handrails, there's uh, a couple other things here. I'll kind of do those one at a time. There's a ammo belt for the gun that's way too shiny, so I'm going to figure out what to do with that. And we'll just continue to put on the small pieces. So one of the final uh, things are um, the markings. and. The tank has got these armor plates that the markings mount on. Um, Henlong has these. These markings are really, they're not stickers. They're a transfer. And just thought I'd show it off. It's on a, a clear backing. lays in place and then uh, the instructions say to push it down and wait 15 minutes and then peel off the the clear transfer lined up there Basically, after they sit for a while, 
then you just peel off the, the transfer and you can see I've got a, a marking here. There's a couple other markings that go on the flaps. I'll get those on and we'll get them peeled off. Closing in on getting this done. Uh, but I want to get the markings on because after I get all the pieces on, the markings on, then I'm going to do a little bit of uh, weathering work on it and spray clear flat over everything. So a um, few more things to go. So uh, here we are at the end. Um, I use these Tamiya weathering masters. I use this oil stain to do the streaking and the silver. Uh, you can't see it really good, but uh, along the edges here to highlight the edges, um, I sprayed everything with clear flat uh, when I was done. And then I just peeled off the masking on the, uh, the cupola windows. Um, yeah, I, I'm super pleased with it. I used NATO Black airbrush the, the tip of the barrel to give us some relief. And... Uh, uh, oh my gosh, a lot of work, uh, a lot of painting. Uh, the antennas had a, a little ring on the top so you don't poke your eye out. But uh, obviously not at scale, so I clipped those off with wire cutters and then put a drop of uh, CA glue on the tip of each of those and painted them. Uh, it looks a lot better. You see the number boards. I streaked them with a little bit of NATO black that I airbrushed on just kind of to dull everything down a little bit and uh, let me move my, my uh, mat out of the way and we'll get some better pictures. I thought it would be fun to just show off how large this uh, Merkava is. Um, this is my uh, Tamiya Tiger 1 tank uh, that I did uh, a few years back. YouTube video, there's a four part series on it. I really like this tank. It's one of my favorite display pieces, but uh, and it runs good too. But look at the look at the size difference. Holy smoke! This uh, Israeli tank is is huge. If I line up the, line up the fronts here, it's it's massive compared to the to the Tiger. So um, yeah, <laughs> big tank. So anyway. Um, there we go. This was uh, this was really fun to do. I, a lot of painting, though. I was back to my paint booth 20 times, uh, spraying additional paint on it. And uh, but I really like how it turned out. I think it looks great. It's a great representation of the of the tank, um, and uh, it sounds good and it runs good. So very very happy with it. I think that uh, Henlong has been doing some amazing stuff lately. And this is their newest tank, so I had no doubt it would be good, and it is good. Um, I uh, I like it, and it's going to go in my office on my tank shelf. So one of these days I'm going to do a Tamiya Abrams that will look really good with this. But right now, as I shoot this video, Tamiya has been out of stock on them for several months. and I don't know when they'll, they'll get more, but they will eventually, and when they do I'll build one of those. So... Uh, there you go, Henlong uh, IDF uh, Merkava 4 um, RC tank. Looks great, runs good. Um, I enjoyed the painting. I thought it looked pretty good actually right out of the box, but definitely looks better painted in the correct colors and, and uh, with a little weathering and stuff on it. So, um, more tank videos in the future. Not a lot of them, but every once in a while I'll do a tank. So I appreciate it. Uh, please subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. Uh, that helps with the, uh, the video rankings. And uh, there we go. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.